Restaurants are kind of buggy in The Sims and honestly kind of annoying to use, but I won't lie, I really like building them. I feel like half of it might just be that I think it's really fun to pick out the custom menus, but either way, I do really enjoy making restaurants in The Sims, and I've got kind of a fun one for you today. In the world that came with Cottage Living, there's already a pub, there's sort of like a bar here in this main downtown area, and I thought it might be kind of fun to try and build a new pub for ourselves, but have it be classed as a restaurant instead of a bar. You can actually have your sims buy a lot of food at the bars now, there's like a ton of options, but I still kind of like the idea of building like a very classic British pub and having it serve British pub food. And so this lot is classed as a restaurant, but it could be switched into a bar, it has like all the requirements for both. And like I said, I was trying to make it very British inspired. I will say that I am a silly little Florida girl, okay? So it might not be entirely accurate. I think I've got some idea of what it should look like, I am married to a British man, but <laughs> I am a silly little Florida girl, and this is also The Sims, so it's not like a perfectly exact replica of a real-life British pub. I was kind of just trying to make something sort of similar to that, and I think it turned out really cute. I used a lot of like the stuff from Get Together so we could have some really pretty paneling on the walls. There's a lot of like wood and brick and stone accents everywhere, and I had a really good time furnishing this. I ended up trying to use a bunch of like mismatched chairs to try and make it seem like a little eclectic on the inside too. I don't know. I think it turned out pretty Pretty well. I know I'm a little bit biased because I built it, but <laughs> I was pretty proud of this. I will say that the roofing gave me a lot of trouble on this one. That was probably the hardest part for me, was figuring out how I wanted the roof to look. And not even like the actual shape of the roof, because I feel like I can actually do the shape of roofs pretty well. I dare I say I think roofing is kind of a strong point for me. It was just the color of the roof. I really didn't know what color I wanted to paint it, because I was kind of trying to have this building match the ones nearby. I wanted it to look similar to the other buildings in town, but I also wanted to use a lot of things from Cottage Living, and then I wanted to have like a cute awning, so I was trying to match the awning, so I kept going back and forth between this like sort of browny purple shingle color, and also a lot of the thatched roofs. In the end, I actually used the thatched roof, but you'll probably see me change it like four or five times throughout this video, because I, I did change my mind a lot. Now you might be noticing that this lot is called the Rusty Bell, and there is actually a reason that I built this, I didn't just like decide to to build a British pub out of nowhere. Long story short, I've got this legacy challenge that I've been playing here on my YouTube channel, and I can link the playlist for you if you want to go back and watch it. But recently, one of my sims met this guy named Rusty, and we almost ended up marrying him. I won't lie, I was exclusively going to marry this man because his name was Rusty. You see, my sims family, their last name is Bell, so I thought it would be hilarious if we like married this guy named Rusty, and then, and then his name would be Rusty Bell. It just, it made me laugh, okay? And so so I was fully prepared to marry this man exclusively because of his first name. It ended up not working out, it seemed that he really didn't like my sim that much, <laughs> so we decided to not marry him in the end, they ended up breaking up. But I've been so stuck on this like Rusty Bell idea, and we were kind of joking about it on my Twitch stream, and we were like, you know what, the Rusty Bell almost sounds like the name of a pub or something, and then, you know, I, I built the pub. So this is the Rusty Bell pub. Perhaps maybe Rusty owns this pub, I don't know. That's news to me, I was engaged to the man, and I didn't realize he was a pub owner, but it seems he is, and he owns this one in Henford on Bagley. There is lore to this, okay? This is my Sims ex-boyfriend's pub. You know, I won't lie, I've never actually spent this much time and effort worrying what my Sims exes are up to, but in this case, I built him an entire lot. I actually considered putting like an apartment up on the second floor and giving him like a place to live and pretending that Rusty lived here, but I decided against it because I thought it'd be more fun to have like some more gameplay items for the actual visitors of the pub. So upstairs in this building there ends up being like a sort of sitting area, there's like some games tables like foosball and stuff, and like a fireplace and things. That's kind of just on one half, and the other half is like more of a storage room, but I did add in a few useful items. Like I put in a closet from Get Together, so there is in fact a woohoo spot here. I've got my priorities straight, okay? You never know what could happen. You never know when you might need your Sims to have a woohoo spot in the restaurant, so I made sure to include one. It's honestly also kind of fun to have a place for like the foosball table and the dartboard, because I kind of forget those things exist and I don't really use them all that often, but if you're gonna put them anywhere, a place like this is like very appropriate for that kind of stuff, so I did use those in this building. And like I had mentioned, I made this place into a restaurant, like the whole idea was that it was going to be a restaurant, but I also made sure it was functional as a bar as well, so if you wanted to download this lot, you could like switch the lot type to a bar 
bar or a restaurant and both would work perfectly fine. I know I keep saying this, but I really love the idea of restaurants in this game. I love building restaurants in this game. I love the creativity of like making a custom menu for restaurants in this game, but the actual functional gameplay of restaurants is a little bit rough. Um, it takes your Sims like nine hours to finish a meal and sometimes it's just not worth it. So, um, it might be better to have it be a bar. <laughs> but I did upload it to the gallery as a restaurant so it would have my custom menu. And I will show you that menu at the end when I do the tour because I want you to see it. I did spend time on it and I think it's kind of fun so I'll show you. But again, disclaimer, I am a silly little Florida girl. So, <laughs> while I did my best, it might not be perfectly accurate and that is okay. I don't mean to offend any Brits, although I will mention again that I did marry one and he only moved to the US like a year and a half ago and I've spent a lot of time in England, so in the grand scheme of things, I, I know slightly more than you might think, okay? I'm like getting defensive. <laughs> I swear, I know what British pubs are like, okay? <laughs> I've been to one. None of you care about this. Oh, okay. So you're gonna watch me place a lot of really nice terrain paint. I'm gonna spend a really long time doing some really lovely terrain paint on the outside here. And then I'm going to reload the lot to try and change the lighting color. And then all of my terrain paint is going to disappear. I'm telling you, this is the most irritating bug in the entire game. And I'm gonna keep complaining about it. I feel like I have this conversation in every single speed build, but it is so annoying to spend like a really long time figuring out terrain paint and then have it just disappear like that when you reload the lot for some reason. And it's been happening for years. This isn't even like a new bug, it's an old bug. It's been going on forever and they've never fixed it. I don't even really understand what it is, but sometimes when I'm building lots like this, I'm building this from Manage Worlds. If I go back to Manage Worlds, leave, and then come back with a sim or something, sometimes the terrain paint will just be gone. All of it, just gone. And I don't really understand like what about this causes that to happen. I don't really know how to like work around it. It's even happened when I've like come back into the game after closing the game. So say I built like half of this today and then tomorrow I wanted to come back and finish the second half. If I reload, sometimes the terrain paint will disappear. And this is like not always that big of a deal. Like sometimes on smaller houses or like less complicated terrain things, it's like fine. I can just like put it back onto the plants or whatever. But I've done builds where it's like a really fancy farmhouse or something. So I've done like really detailed terrain paint. I've tried to do like alternating shades of grass to look like rows in the farm or you do like layered terrain paint to make like a kind of cool dirt path so you've put a lot of effort into it and then it just goes away. Oh it's so annoying. It is so annoying. The other weird terrain paint glitch is when you place a lot sometimes the terrain paint will like scoot over. I don't really get that either but there's a bug where if you download a lot off the gallery sometimes the terrain paint will be like a smidge to the right for some reason and so say I had like put a terrain path down it might not like line up perfect with the front door anymore but in my game it did just when you download it, it's like scooted over for some reason. You might have seen both of these happen before and oh, they are so annoying. I would love for the Sims team to fix them. I'm just gonna keep complaining about it for the next however many years until they do because it's been happening forever. This is not a new bug. This may have even been happening since before they added terrain tools. And I don't just mean like pawns from Cottage Living. I mean like since we first got hills and stuff. I, I think it's been happening for that long. Anyway, let me explain what's happening here on the build now because I've made some more progress. So in the back of the lot, there's like a door that comes out from the kitchen and there's kind of like a closed in, fenced in back garden space. I wanted to furnish that a bit like a garden. So I had like the trash can there, but I also put a couple like planter boxes. And then in the front, we have some more outdoor space. Like there's a big bricked patio and I wanted to put some tables and stuff. And I will say I had a really hard time picking the tables that I wanted to use because I wanted to have like an umbrella to sort of break it up and have some more color but then I wanted to have like a picnic table, but I didn't love the umbrellas on the picnic table. So I just kept changing my mind about which tables made the most sense. And of course there was also a lot of feedback um, from people in England in my Twitch chat that hated what I was doing. <laughs> so I changed the tables like so many times. I did settle on picnic tables though, and I feel like it looks good. I was just kind of like leaning towards wanting one of the other ones just to have like a little bit less wood out there. I feel like there was so much wood and like the dark wood picnic table on top of that dark brick. I just didn't love how it looked, but I do think once I added in some more decor, it started to make more sense. And also for a building like this, I feel like the picnic tables also make sense. Like it, it just feels appropriate for this style. I have literally been to a place just like this, although they have a lot more tables than just three at the place that I went to, but it was similar with the picnic tables and they had like some menus or whatever on the tables.
well, you know, classic stuff like that. Also, for some reason, for a long time, I've always just thought that you couldn't use picnic tables as official restaurant tables in the game. Like, I just assumed that it wouldn't count as a dining spot. I don't know why I thought that. I guess I just assumed you needed to have an actual table and actual chairs and that these ones didn't work. But these do work. Your sims can use the picnic table as, like, an actual table and they can request that at the restaurant to go sit there. I just, like, in my head thought it wouldn't, so I never did, but I tested it and it does work. Maybe it, like, didn't always work and that's why I thought that, but for some reason I had it in my brain that you couldn't use picnic tables, but you can. Okay, also with this build, I was sort of trying to limit packs a little bit. I didn't want to just use, like, every pack ever. Obviously, I've used, like, Dine Out and Cottage Living and Get Together and stuff, but I was trying to not just use, like, random items from everything in hopes that it would be slightly more downloadable, you know? Which was kind of tough because there was a lot of things that I wanted to use, like maybe different bar backs or things like that that just didn't really fit either because we didn't have the pack. Or honestly, when I was trying, a lot of them did not look good. There was a lot of discussion in my Twitch chat about like what bar back we should do because there isn't actually one of those that came with Cottage Living. We have a few really cool ones from like different packs. There's like an awesome one in Strangerville. There's a really nice one in Get Together, but none of them have, you know, age old problem. None of them have matching wood swatches. So I wanted to try that Get Together one, but then it just did not look good with this bar from Cottage Living. The colors were just way off, so I ended up not using it. I kind of made my own using some counters and like a menu and stuff, and I think it looks okay. Oh my god, and the other problem is that I so badly wanted to have like a big open space upstairs. I was thinking about having like the whole thing be one room and not just a storage room, and so I wanted to have like the staircase be open around it, like a big open landing, and I was trying so hard to use it, but the problem is when the roof clips, you have to like kind of do some things to mess with it and make it so the roof isn't clipping. And you can usually fix it by like lining up the edges of the roof pieces exactly with the wall and then it won't be clipping anymore unless the roof trim is too wide and it clips through the wall. So in this case, I was trying to do that. I was trying to fix the roof from clipping and I was putting like, you know, the roofs lined up against the edges. I had it all fixed just like normal because dare I say, I've got some experience with, with fixing roof clipping. But because I was using that cottage living like thatched roof, the thatched roof trim is super wide and so it clips through the wall still even despite my attempts to fix it. So I just couldn't have the like opening in the floor. It's fine, it isn't a big deal. I just kind of wanted to have like a wider opening around the stairs and you just can't do that here. For some reason in The Sims 4, as soon as you put fences into a room, it just goes all downhill immediately. <laughs> you try and put fences to have an open landing and it's, it is all downhill from here. It does not work. I've made some videos like roofing tutorial type videos that I can link down below for you where I kind of explain that and show it off in more detail because there are usually ways around it, but this one, this one was just not. <laughs> This one was not for me. One thing that I did love about this building though was the inside and like the chair layout of the tables. I wanted to do like a kind of mismatched dining chair thing in this building. I've seen this done before in real life where like fancy dining rooms will have like different chairs at the tables, like all kind of mismatched. And this is embarrassing, but I just did this in Animal Crossing. I was making like an Animal Crossing like dinner table set up and I had this long banquet table with like different foods on it and then different mismatched chairs. And I I loved it so much that I wanted to try and do it in The Sims. I know this is embarrassing, so I did it here. And I think it looks kind of cool. It's like a series of a bunch of different wooden chairs. This whole place is like very wooden on the inside, but I almost think that the mismatched woods and the mismatched chairs kind of look cool. You could pretend that they like thrifted them, or maybe the building is so old that they've, you know, renovated a few times and they've got old chairs or whatever. I just think it gives a lot of nice character. It's kind of hard to make buildings look old in The Sims, especially because in real life, a building like this would not necessarily be as uniform as The Sims is. Like, it might have, you know, kind of off walls and, like, the ceiling might be super low. It was probably built, like, a really long time ago, and so The Sims being just, like, a big box makes it kind of hard to, to get that sort of character in it. But I do think we succeeded, okay? The Rusty Bell is a very beautiful building, and I am proud of how it looks. I mentioned earlier that upstairs, I kind of tried to make a game room. This was me adding in a bunch of the stuff that I needed for like the bar lot requirements. I had all the restaurant stuff easy, but for the bar I needed to have like a TV and a stereo and the TV and stereo stuff didn't really fit downstairs that well. So up here I was kind of trying to, to get those things. I feel like the TV requirement for the bar lots in The Sims 4 is supposed to be kind of like sports bar-y. Like I think you're supposed to have it for that reason. And I think you probably would find people watching sports here, but it just didn't really 
really fit how I had laid out the downstairs, how it was kind of more like a restaurant. So up here, I tried to make it a bit more casual. I had like one tiny old TV up there. There's like the foosball and a dartboard. There's even some books and some decor and stuff. And I do think that it looks okay. I probably would rather to have not had the TV here, but I really wanted it to function as a bar as well in case like when playing in it, you wanted to switch between a bar or a restaurant. So I made sure I added it. And then through that door in this like back dark room that I've left empty, I kind of made that into more of a storage room. That's where I kind of considered maybe having like a fake apartment that Rusty Bell could live in. Although I guess his last name is not Bell. His name's Rusty. I forget his actual last name. It would have been Bell had he married us. Maybe that makes this kind of weird. Like the fact that Rusty got dumped by us and then built an entire restaurant called the Rusty Bell. <laughs> <laughs> based on what his name could have been had we not broken up. That is a little bit odd. I guess I hadn't considered that. Um, but anyway, this room could have been Rusty's apartment. I chose to make it into more of like a storage room for like the owner or the employees or whatever. And in here is where I put that closet. So your Sims can woohoo in there. I made sure of it. It's kind of weird because it's it's sort of dark in there. It isn't like a very nice employees only sort of space. Um, it's just kind of dark and full of crates and stuff, but I, it looks cool. And I, I feel like it tells a bit of a story. And you know, your Sims can woohoo in there, which is all that really matters. Um, and that's the entire build. That is the Rusty Bell pub. Now that we've kind of finished the speed build, I want to pop into the game and show you an actual tour. So I built this on the pub lot in Henford on Bagley, this one where the gnome's arms is. Here's how it looks from the outside. There's a couple things that I really like about this. Number one, I love how this brick looks with the brick on the walls. And I also like how the roof overhang makes it look like this second floor is a bit shorter than the first floor. Obviously it's the Sims, so they're actually the same height, but I think in real life, it kind of makes sense to have a shorter second floor, especially in like an old building like this. They might have like really short ceilings up there. So I, I like that about it. I also put this fake phone booth. You can't actually use this. It's purely decorative. I feel like that's a very missed opportunity in this pack, but I put that there on the front. This was kind of fun. I made like a fake planter box around the tree using these little things. These are like support beams from Cottage Living, but sized up, they like tile well and look kind of nice. It's like a fake wood frame around it. We've got some cute little signs kind of out front around the side here, there's like a bike and just a bench and stuff. I thought about putting something over here, like a playground or a garden, but it's actually kind of small. So I decided to leave it empty. Back here, there's kind of a small little garden off the kitchen as well. And then there's also just kind of some empty space in the way back. When you actually first come inside, you can have your Sims like check in for a table right here. And there's a few tables inside. They're all kind of small, but I try to always have like a few two seater tables and three seater tables. And also there's like some four seat ones out here. That way, like some various sizes of groups can come here, although there's not any for like more than four. So that might be an oversight. <laughs> this is the bar and this is that like fake bar back that I made. When I say bar backs, I mean stuff like this item or even like this one from Strangerville. There's like some stuff that's specifically designed for this purpose. It just didn't really fit here that well. And a lot of them are kind of tall. Like that one is too tall to use on a short wall height because it like clips into the ceiling. So I kind of made my own. And then over here we have a really small kitchen. Again, not very big, very basic, exact what you need, but I think this building kind of calls for that. And then over here, we have the staircase upstairs and the bathroom. There's a really small bathroom here. It's just got like one sink, a seating area, and a couple toilets. I don't think it needs to be anything super fancy, but it, it works. And then upstairs is just like some games and stuff. We got foosball. There's some music. I will say this was making me really, really angry. <laughs> I was trying to use this item, the dartboard, and I wanted to put it somewhere, but I was getting so mad about how this line was like layering on top of the rug. I under understand why it's there, like gameplay wise. It just was bothering me so much how it was right there. And I couldn't really find a spot that made more sense for it than right there. So I just left it. But this, this line was making me so angry. And then just through here is that tiny little storage room. This is the woohoo spot I was talking about. And there's just like a desk and stuff. I didn't really want to put a lot of things up here that Sims would autonomously use because for the story, I didn't really want anybody going into the storage room unless like you were sneaking in there to use the closet. That is so gross. I'm so sorry but I felt like this wasn't really supposed to be a public space. So I didn't want to put a computer in case like, you know, Jeffrey Landgrab came and started like playing video games on it because it would be kind of weird. Oh my God, it reset my outfits. I picked custom outfits for this. D is my menu fine? Okay, I think my menu is still there. That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I picked kind of a small drink menu. We've got a few appetizers, things like salad and fries and, you know, soup and stuff. For the mains, there's kind of a good collection of like some breakfast things like 
pancakes and eggs and toast and stuff. But we also have like roast chicken and shepherd's pie and like fish and chips, you know, um, all the things they added with cottage living that are supposed to be British food. Bangers and mash. We also have faux meat and mash. So we've got some good options. And then for all the desserts, I picked like scones and crumpets. I'm sorry. I had fun with this. I won't lie. It isn't a huge menu either, so hopefully it's not like overwhelming when you bring your sims here. But that is the Rusty Bell. I've got it on my gallery if you want to download it. The lighting on this lot is not very good. I feel like it's not doing it justice, but I'm actually really proud of this and I had a lot of fun building it. If you like build videos like this, I do a ton of this kind of thing on my YouTube channel, so feel free to subscribe. Thank you for putting up with my rambling for the last 20 minutes. And I think on that note, I'm gonna end this video right here. Thanks for watching, have the best rest of your day, and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye everybody. There's something about the hosts being in suits that just does not fit the vibe that I'm going for. I'm so annoyed that it reset my custom outfits. I don't know why it does that. That's one of the other really annoying restaurant bugs is the resetting of staff outfits.